Okay, and welcome students that are taking math for business and finance and math applications. Uh, this particular video or series of videos, I'm going to keep these to about 10 minutes long. I'm going to try to keep my eye on the clock and however many videos it takes in order to cover the theory for chapter 5 because this here is about chapter 5, solving equations for the unknown. However many videos it takes is how many it's going to take. If it takes two or three or four, you know, so be it. Now, realize that in the past, um, chapters one, two, and three w w basically covered basic math, okay? Um, chapter four was about concepts that related to, you know, banks and bank reconciliations. For that, all you really needed was to be able to add and subtract, okay? Chapter 5 here is now going to go over some more of the basic rules of math, and it's also going to start uh, delving into solving you know, word problems. Now, I realize that you've had word problems in the past. However, they've been relatively simple word problems, and going forward, the word problems are going to become more and more difficult. And you're going to need to know what's in this chapter, okay? And also in chapter six, which is uh, percentages and uh, it's percents and let's see, uh, and their application. So it's going to talk about percentages. And again, that's also math. But going forward, all of these are all of these math concepts are going to be applied to the word problems, and the word problems are going to become more and more difficult. Okay? So really pay attention to what's going on in this uh, chapter. And while you you don't need to memorize the rules, okay, I don't know the rules. I don't memorize the rules. I understand what the rules are, and I'm able to use them like tools, those specific concepts, as tools for when I need them in a particular situation. You're not able to do word problems by mimicking and copying step by step. Sure, if you know if you find one that's exactly the same, and you're first learning. You're, you can copy and mimic a particular word problem. You can see the similarities between the, uh, what you did and what you're, what you're doing. However, realize that word problems are always going to change. And, you know, that simple one that you're trying to find in the book, may, you know, there might be a slight twist when it comes to the problem that you're working on at this moment in time, whether it's a homework problem, a test problem, or a real-life problem. Okay? No book can put all word problems in a book. Okay, it just can't happen. What can be taught is the concepts and theories, but you need to understand those concepts and need to apply them to this particular situation using the right tool at the right time in order to solve what you need to have solved. Okay, you can't do math by mimicking it and copying from a book. You can go back and look at it and see how something was done, but you need to look at each individual situation as it is. You're not going to find all of the questions in the chapters. Okay. So with that said, um, I also want to point out that in this on the community under the Math for Business slash Application section, when you look at Chapter Five, there is a video. It's about 17 minutes long that talks about solving word problems. That one was created uh, quite a while ago uh, for a specific intent and purpose, and uh, I put it up there so that you, the students, would have something to watch and see how I think about doing word problems and have that as a guide. So if you watch that video and you watch these series of videos, there's going to be some overlap. Realize that this set of videos, um, the theory and concepts in this chapter, are going to be much more detailed than what was presented in that other video. Um, it's slightly different. So it's worth watching the 17 minutes of it but realize that some of it is going to be a little bit different from what you're seeing here because this is, these sets of videos are going to go into much more detail okay All right so with that said let's move on um, to our the first slide here and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, go over these rules that are spread throughout the textbook okay throughout the chapter um, you see the examples for them in the in the textbook in the chapter. If you have any additional questions, feel free to you know telephone or contact an instructor, 
uh, with your question and we'll try to help you understand it. Um, but again, realize that you need to, you don't need to memorize these rules. What you need to do is be able to understand them and use them at their appropriate times. Okay, so with that said, our first rule was um, the variables and constants rules. Okay, number one, if no number is in front of a letter, it is the number one. So the examples it gave in the book were B is equal to 1B and C is equal to 1C. Notice that you don't have a number in front of the B. That's to be understood when you don't have the number in front of uh, the variable that it's understood to be the number 1 and that's why you're looking at 1B. Now the 1B in and of itself because the constant is next to the variable it means 1 times B. Okay. So with that said, if I had 2b, okay, that means it would mean 2 times the, con the variable b. The 2 is a constant. It's a number. Okay. And when I have the 2b, it, that means 2 times b. So coming back to our, our rule here, when I have just the letter b, it's understood that the number in front of it is a, is a 1 which represents 1 times b, which would be b itself. And that's why we don't write that number in front of the b. It makes no sense to keep on writing the 1 when it's just understood. You know, the same here with the c. Nothing in front of the c means that 1c or 1 times c, which is c anyway. So just write the c. You don't need to write the 1 in front of it. Okay, question number, um, rule number 2. If no sign... Remember, sign is addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. If no sign is in front of a letter or number, it is a plus sign. Okay. So with nothing in front of this C, it's the same as it being a plus C. Okay. With n nothing in front of the number 4, it means it's equal to a plus 4. So what that means is, is that... Um, if you wanted to have a negative number, you actually have to write the minus sign in front of that letter, or you have to write the negative sign in front of that number. All right? You can't assume that if I write C, that it is a negative C. You have to, you know, for the simple reason, with nothing in front of the C, the rule says that represents a plus C. Now, uh, it just popped into my head that uh, there are situations where you have a plus and a minus C. It could be a plus or a minus, and that's how you would write that. Okay, um, but just you know, for this intents and purposes between for this particular rule, if there's no sign in front of a letter or number, that means it's a positive number. Okay, so here we have this example: four times the quantity B plus one. Okay. And I had said the quantity being these parentheses. And a little bit later on, I think it's the last slide, we'll, we'll talk about the quantity or the parentheses, all right, and what that actually means. You know, it's like the chicken or the egg, which comes first? You really, you know, math was created by these, you know, really smart people. And you just have to, you know, take some things uh, for granted at first in order to be able to understand within the entire context. So when I'm looking at this, uh, let me change colors here. Using these two rules, right? This here, four, since there's nothing in front of the four, that means it's a plus four, okay? And since there's nothing in front of the B, that means it's a plus B, but it also means that it's a number one, all right? As a plus one times B, remember, plus one times a B, is equal to b, right? So that's why it's we see the b here. And then we have a, a plus 1. In this particular case, we have we are showing that this is a plus 1. Realize that and this is getting a little complicated in that this plus 1 means a plus 1 times 1, but we're not going to write the plus 1 twice. We just write it once. We have to write a negative one if we want it to show the sign as a, a minus one. So when we're looking at this particular equation, we actually have two parts here. We have the b itself, and we have the plus one itself. 
and we, we string them together. The B represents a plus, uh, plus 1B. The plus 1 all right, is in and of itself. When we write it B plus 1 and we look at this, I have to think in terms of two different entities. We have to think in terms of the B and I have to think in terms of the plus 1. The sign is a plus for the 1 or if it was a minus 1, it would be a minus 1. The B itself is always going to be a plus B, all right, in this particular situation. I hope that uh, made sense to you. If not, um, you know, feel free to call and speak with an instructor, and we'll go over that for you. But again, just to, you know, erase a little bit here and uh, quickly go over it as a recap. I'm hoping that makes sense. I mean, it's kind of, it's a little bit difficult for me because I don't know the rules themselves. I don't have them memorized. I'm actually looking in the book. But when I'm doing math for myself, I don't even have to think about it because I've just become accustomed to doing it over the course of time. When I see, when I see the B, okay, I, I understand that that means, you know, that the one is in front of it, okay, and that it's one times B. So whenever I see a, a variable as a B, you know, I know what this is, right? And I also know that when I see the variable itself, and remember, a variable could be any letter, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way through Z. But when I see a variable, I also, and I don't have a sign in front of it, I know that it's understood to be a plus, and that's actually a plus one times the C. And that's why when I write C, you know, this is what I understand about that particular variable, okay? So with that said, I'm at 12 minutes, and I'll go on to the next video, okay?